We've already sketched out how interp could work with functions and substitutions, uh, but just to remind you, uh, and remember this box notation means that it's implicitly a call to parse on the quoted mo expression on the inside here. But if we parse that out and then we pass it to interp, and if we were doing substitutions, uh, the result should be this function, but y will get replaced by 10 uh, by substituting due to let. So we would get as a result uh, the function x that takes an x and adds 10 to x, which is what we should expect here. Uh, just to make the slides a bit better, I'm going to move that all in one line, but it's still the same example. Let's consider that example now when we have uh, environments, that is deferred substitutions instead. We start out with the empty environment and then let uh, evaluates 10 and decides that y uh, will be uh, 10 in the environment and then moves on to the body of the let, which is uh, this function form. And now the result should be a function form, but there's a y sitting there instead of a 10 now. We need to somehow remember that y is equal to 10. And we don't want to fall back to substitution because we already know that that has certain performance problems. Uh, to make this problem even more clear, let's make the example bigger. So here I have a large mo form where I've got a big thing in parentheses followed by an argument in parentheses. That is, this first big thing is the function part of a function call, and this part is the argument that we're going to be passing to that function. So to actually make this function call, we need to get a function from that first box and an argument from, from that uh, second pair of parentheses. It's easier to look at the argument part first, so let's do that. Uh, when we have let y equal 7, uh, we know how that works with environments because we uh, still have the empty environment here so far. Uh, then we get a 7 that we uh, bind to y, and then we interp y with that environment, we get a 7 out. And now how about the function part? Uh, again, we start with the empty environment because that's what we have. We find out that y is equal to something, in this case 10, and we start interpreting the function. But now we need to return something that remembers that y is equal to 10, and in particular, we need to remember that it's this environment, uh, not this y equals 7 environment, that is the one that's relevant. What this turns out to be is a question of how we represent function values when we have environments. And what we need to do is represent a function value with a closure that remembers both of these pieces. It needs to remember the function expression, but also any environment that we had when we got to that function expression, because these are substitutions that should have, in principle, happened to that function. In fact, we don't uh, really need the word fun here. What we need is the argument name, the body expression, and the, uh, the environment. And that's the same as these two pieces. So we're going to define value now, which we didn't have before. We used to just use int to be values. But now we have two kinds of values, integers and functions, that are represented as closures. So I'll call it uh, a close v for this new, new option. So for example, when we interpret 10, we used to just get back uh, the value, the immediate number 10, but now we need to get the value 10, which is int v 10. So we're going to have to change interp to return values, and an integer value would be represented that way. If we have a function as a result, like we do in this little example we started with, um, then we're going to produce a close v as a result instead of an int v. The close v has the name of the argument. The close v has three pieces. It's the argument name, the body of the function, and the environment. So that will be literally, uh, so that will be the argument name x. The body is the parse of y plus x, uh, which I'll keep writing in abbreviated form here. And the environment, we started with empty m, and we will have bound y to 10, but now binds also work with values, right? So it's the value 10 uh, that we put into the environment. And so this whole thing is the result that we get from that interp. Uh, it's more complicated than the number, but it's still now a value. It's, a, it's an output of interp. And using these kinds of values will let us implement function calls right. So when we interp uh, and eventually get an int v7 now for the argument expression in that complicated example before, and now when we have function x of y plus x with y equals not just 10 now, but int v10, uh, that means we get this closure. And now the question is, how do we apply how do we call this closure with that argument? So we want to interpret the body which we have here from the close v. Uh, it's this y plus x. And what is the environment that we should use with that y plus x? Well, one of the things that we do when we call a function is we bind the argument name to the argument value. So the right environment for 
calling uh, a function with the body of the, that function is going to bind, in this case, x to the argument 7. But also, in, x plus, uh, in this y plus x, we were supposed to have done the substitution y equals mv10. So this environment is the one that we want to extend with y with x equals 7, uh, and that way we have both of the pieces here, x is 7, y is 10, and we will add those together and get 17.